Okay, I'm going to bug you one more time. Go talk to Ryan. Hello? Did you walk away from your computer? Mother. Ooh. All right. Hello? He's grabbing a drink. Hi. Oh. Listen. I'm I'll, here to bully you. Again. I'll talk to him when he comes back. Listen. Did that? No, no, no. You're retired. Okay, did you see that he unveiled who end of end wokeness is today? He's yeah. literally like been talking about this your like massive conspiracy theory for like weeks now. And you shouldn't wait until August first because the content is hot right now. And last time I made a major recommendation like this, we were like, Oh no, I don't like political like predictors, which is not true. And also you're go talk to Ryan Macbeth. He's free until ten. Okay, I'll get right on that. I think that is everything. Well, hey, what's up? Hey, I don't, I don't know if I'm coming through yet. Use my camera allow this time. I hear your voice. I don't see your video. Do you want me to send video, or do you think that'll cause it to be too laggy? Uh, you can send video if you want. I don't know. I'm in the hotel room, so. Okay. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. How's life going? <laughs> it's freaking crazy i'm going to uh i was just in um i was just in where was i uh, i was just in uh in texas in austin texas for this army uh, vertex conference where we're, we're trying to figure out how to use drones in the future and uh then uh i left austin to go to lax to go to australia for a conference where i'm presenting a paper on uh disinformation in the uh in the in the during natural disasters it's like if there's like a, a natural disaster in hawaii in hawaii in australia mm -hmm. uh one of their big issues is like there might be uh um uh chinese uh disinformation agents might tell people to go to the wrong place to get aid just to destabilize the country sure so but you know once i present then i'll have my paper available and i can have i have my name on another paper well, that's cool. Very nice. Very nice. A very, it's a, it's a weird life. <laughs> like, I, like, have you, did you have any papers like published or anything before you were like YouTubing? Like, was this a part no. of your or no? Okay. No, no, I never did. This, so I have a paper published with the Aramed Lab. I have two papers published with the Aramed Lab, uh, which is the drone delivery, blood delivery service. Uh, one of them I can't release yet because it's, it's, the, the government has to like declassify it, but the other paper, uh, that should be, yeah, we wrote that a couple of months ago. So yeah, that's kind of neat. Like I, I, uh, I love the idea that like someone might be citing me, you know, <laughs> well, that's nice, so yeah. exciting. You can see on a Wikipedia article well, someday and that could be your, that could be your thing that they're citing and somebody could fight yeah, you over I mean, it. Yeah, theoretically. Yeah. And while I'm in Australia, then I, I have to. The uh, the DOD, the Australian Department of Defense, reached out to me, and they were like, well, while you're in the country, can you come down to Canberra, Nabra, can I don't freaking know. I'll, I'm sure I'll figure out which town it is, and uh, do a, a presentation for the DOD on deceptive imagery persuasion. I'm like, all right, well, I got the same thing I did for the uh, Naval Academy, so I'll just use the same presentation, just switch out some graphics. So that should be fun. They're not paying me for that one, though. Oh no! Well, listen, we all get paid an exposure in one way or another, right? You can say yeah, you went. You can well, say you went. Awesome. Well, yeah, um, I can say I went. It's the right thing to do, right? Like the Australia is a major ally. They're part of Five Eyes. Um, you know, uh, I want Australia to be successful in their disinformation fight. So I can't. Uh, I can't complain. And you know what? I mean, I get to see. I get to see Sydney. I get to see the Gold Coast. I get to see Canberra. Like I don't know if Canberra is something to see or not. The only funny thing is it's supposed to be cold there. I don't know how cold, so I brought a freaking... How can I help you? Um, I'm just hanging out. I'm just chilling. Just uh, been uh, been reading and researching. Um, yeah. I, um, one of the things that I've been like uh, paying more attention to... Uh -huh. Here's the thing. Here's two things, okay? One, I agree. Ooh. I think there should be uh, kinetic responses for verified disinformation i think that is yeah. totally fair game number one yeah. number two okay uh this is my pet project and my pet project i mean i'll announce it as an idea and it'll go nowhere but if any congressman wanted to support this i will help campaign for you <laughs> whatever that means okay 
I think that there should be legislation passed in the United States that makes it so that if you are any type of media person with a certain threshold following, that you should have to publish like tax forms or like income for your business. I think that that should be publicly viewable information. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The I don't more know what that the I, threshold. The, like 5,000 followers on fucking YouTube, whatever. It would be a low threshold. I feel like yeah. the more that I look around, um, so I've started like paying more attention to like the Twitter bot stuff, um, reading some of the releases that come out from, I don't even know which departments, whatever cybersecurity stuff, where they talk about um, uh, like the different softwares, you know, available. And I've been, um, I I've just been like kind of like rethinking about a lot of the things that people say. And um, I'm trying not to switch. I feel like I've, I've, I've flipped the switch like <laughs> very dramatically in my brain to where the bot stuff and the Russian stuff was kind of like in the background and it's like always something we should be aware of to now it's like at the forefront of my mind with almost every single interaction that I'm looking at with people. Uh, I feel like people are lockstep with pro-Russian talking points ubiquitously across yeah. the entirety of the conservative and center mainstream and alternative media sphere. Like, I don't know if it could be any more lockstep. Some are. Some aren't. I mean... Uh, who isn't? I, I, Tell me who isn't. Help me. Save me. Help my brain uh, here. Massage my brain a little bit. Oh, you did a debate with Sebastian Gorka. He, he, that is Sebastian. true. He's not... Yeah. Although he's kind of like an older guy. I don't know how relevant he is anymore. I don't know how big his channel he's, is. He sees how dangerous this is. Mm -hmm. But he still uh, supports Trump. You know what? <laughs> I don't... This is going to sound nuts. Uh -oh. This might piss you off. It doesn't matter. What doesn't? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if President Biden is elected <laughs> or or Gavin Newsom, which, you know, maybe, right? right? Mm -hmm. Or President Trump. Ukraine is still going to be supported. And I, I say that because the at least the, the Democratic wing of the party knows that if we don't stop Russia in Ukraine with Ukrainian support or by supporting Ukraine with weapons, we're going to have to eventually use American troops mm -hmm. when Russia invades uh, Poland and uh, the Baltics. And President Trump, for whatever flaws that, that, it, uh, that you consider him to, to have, what's his biggest fear? China, <laughs> right? China. That's, that's what he always calls it. And I think he knows that the, the best way of defeating China is to stand firm on Ukraine because if China sees Europe and America kind of get all wishy-washy on supporting Ukraine, they'll go, well, we'll be able to take Taiwan because if they can't support Ukraine when they can railhead everything there, how are they going to support Taiwan when they have to float everything there? So I don't think it really matters. I know that, that guy, J.D. Vince or Vance or something, he was just made vice president. But what do vice presidents do? They 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 uh, they run the Senate and they open shopping malls, right? Mm, like, I mean, I think I feel like it depends. <laughs> I think different vice presidents have different like um, take charge of different issues. Maybe, maybe not that. Cheney, right? Cheney sure. was a little. And even uh, I think even Biden right. did a lot of like foreign policy visits and everything for on um, Trump's behalf or I'm sorry, not Trump's hey. behalf on um, Obama's behalf. I think uh, I think Biden was pretty involved in that. But but I mean, it depends on the vice president. Like, I don't know yeah. what Kamala Harris does. Um, <laughs> right. I look the, at. Uh, I feel like you. I, I feel like at, you're assuming really easily that it's like a. It's a. It's just a given that Trump would support Ukraine. I feel like. I feel like the issue that I have is um like, yeah. if there's an issue that's scary to you, uh you you can either like confront it head on, which requires yeah. like a, a kind of training, or you kind of like uh, like if you ever seen like a like a trained boxer fight an untrained person and they like they turn their back and it's like well if you turn your back to somebody you've completely lost i feel like donald trump is in that latter category where his way of combating things isn't like the proactive world hegemonic hegemonic american way of like well we need to be the the leader of the free world we need to make sure that nato is strong and powerful we need to show support for allies i feel like donald trump is on the train of we need to just tear for the fuck out of everybody we need to get the fuck out of all these wars we need to like bring all of our troops home and just stay in america and we need to be as isolationist as like possible that's what it feels like and i feel like that comes out in the form of tariffs and in the form of constantly and consistently undermining nato and in the form of telling Ukraine that like they need to figure it out immediately and solve a peaceful deal, which is going to leave Ukraine fucked, I feel like. Yeah, and we're just going to have to deal with deal with Russia again in ten years. 
So we can either deal with it now. And all Ukraine wants are weapons. They're not even asking for dudes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, like, give us this two things. Weapons them. and permission. Because they're very, very, very shackled yeah. in terms of how far in they can strike as well. Yeah, that's a tough one. That might change with the F-16. I, I don't know. You know, the... When the F-16 is introduced, probably the biggest, I don't say game changer, I think we should stop saying that word, but, you know, once the, the biggest advantage the F-16 brings, in addition to the AMRAAM air-to-air -air missile, which is close to the, to the um, oh my God, what was it called, A A-37 that Russia uses, it's, um, close in range, not exact, but mm -hmm. close. Uh, it's the fact that the uh, F-16 carry the harm anti-radiation missile, and uh, it can do what's called wild weasel. So they'll they'll have F-16s go up, and they're they're they they try to bait the radar, like come come shoot at me, come shoot at me, light me up, light me. Oh, you just lit me up, and they turn and they fire a missile right down that illumination beam. And uh, the other thing is jammers. What what does uh, what is a, a an electronic warfare jammer it's an emitter mm -hmm. right it's, it emits radiation what does the harm anti-radiation missile do it goes after radiation so now you have this you can home on jam and now you're faced with this this dilemma of all right i can either shut my jammer off and be blown up or i can keep my jammer on and try to prevent gps signals from being uh from being used or from being used on precision weapons so the fact that the F-16 can get illuminated and then fire a missile immediately, that, that is a, an evolutionary capability compared with what Ukraine is doing now with the MiG-29, where they have to program in the target ahead of time. Can you explain real quick, when you're saying that um, somebody shoots at an F-16 and then they can fire a missile immediately, why? Is it because the yeah. enemies revealed a position and they didn't have the recon before? Or what is that? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so think of it like this. Imagine, uh, imagine you have a flashlight. Right. Yeah. When, you know, you're trying to find, I don't know, uh, you're in your basement and the lights are out and you know there's like a bat in your basement. You're going to try to find this bat. Mm -hmm. So you turn that flashlight on. Well, that bat can see that flashlight, right? So sure. it knows that it's just been illuminated. Mm -hmm. right? So when you're flying in an F-16, since the software in the F-16 can talk to the harm missile and dynamically say, hey, I just smelled something do you want me to go after this? That provides a, a massive capability increase because now you can do this dynamically. If you're lit up by this illumination radar, really no different than you're illuminating someone with a flashlight, you can fire a missile that follows that flashlight beam down. And since the harm remembers the location of that flashlight beam, it's just gonna go right to that source. So. You have two choices now. You can shut the radar off. It's still going to find you, or you can move the entire radar unit. Gotcha. So this is like, and, and we wouldn't want. assume we don't have recon on where all of those stations are anyway. That's just information we don't have. You have to wait for them to reveal themselves or? You, so we probably have satellite data, but if Russia is smart, they're moving these things on occasion mm -hmm. because once you set up after 24, 48 hours, like everyone knows where you are. Okay. And then you might be able to be attacked by a dumb munition. So there's there's some most likely in places like Crimea, they probably have semi permanent sites and near the front lines, they're probably moving those constantly. And don't forget, they also might have to turn them off or go to low power for maintenance. You gotta do that. You gotta do maintenance periodically. Mm -hmm. And you also have to do deconfliction. So you might uh, you might turn your radars off when you're letting uh, friendly uh, aircraft through uh, a corridor. So let's say you have a couple of Su-24s and they wanna go bomb Kharkiv. You might turn your radars off, that way there's a corridor, that way there isn't a chance in heck that you'll be able to accidentally shoot down some of your own planes. So that's something Russia might do, mm -hmm. you know, if they, if they want to make sure, because they can't do deconfliction that well, but again, neither can we. You know, it's hard when you get all that stuff flying, and when you say deconfliction, what specifically does that mean? Deconfliction. So for deconfliction, um, so for deconfliction, that essentially means that you, you you need to know where friendly planes are, mm -hmm. and and plan for protecting that airspace. 
So that way, if you have a plane wander into surface-to-air missile airspace, the surface-to-air missile guys know, oh, wait, a strike package is supposed to come through between the hours of 09 and 0930, so let's not shoot at them. Oh, right? just preventing friendly place. fire, basically. Okay, okay. Yeah, preventing friendly fire. Everybody gotcha. knows where everybody else is. Okay. And that helps prevent any kind of uh, any kind of fratricide. Okay. Usually. Usually. Some, it still happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we, we shot down the U.S. Patriot system shot down, uh, I believe, a couple of British planes, British and American planes during the first Gulf War. It's hard. We had all this stuff flying around. And, you know, the word might not get down to the other unit. Like, hey, uh, don't shoot at these planes. They're coming through. Like, all it takes is one person to not pass on a message. And, yeah. you know, that Patriot screaming through the sky. Do you think that, um, are you worried at all that Republicans don't take the Russia stuff seriously at all? Or do you think that they will in office? you think it's different than the rhetoric? Or? I, I think there's things you say to get elected, and then there's things you actually do. <laughs> and, you know, I know that, that one of the things that people have talked about is is deep state. And, and deep state is really just your career civil servants, right? Mm -hmm. And these people have studied Russia for years. They've studied China for years. And, uh, you know, th those are the people you're going to kind of lean on when developing policy. There'd be some people who say, well, I have policy experience and whatever. And, you know, I I'm sure you looked at that Project 2025 book. I've seen a bit. I of actually it read it. Oh, OK, I've read I've read the whole thing, all 900 freaking pages. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pages. I'm doing I'm gonna do two videos about it. One is actually about the actual document. And then one is like what the what they're saying about the military portion. Because there's some things like they want like a six, 350 ship Navy, probably not a bad idea. They also want to prevent transgender people from serving in the military. What is our, what's the size of our Navy right now? Not that many. I want to say, now you're asking me Department of the Boat people questions. Uh, I want to say 275-ish ships. Okay. I'd be wrong, though. that's easy to Google. Okay. But. Under Ronald Reagan, we had almost 600. Gotcha. And now, you know, one of the issues... Oh, go ahead. You know, one of the issues is that a lot of these ships aren't as effective as even the ones from the 1980s. We used to be really into frigates. Now, the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, the Kid class... Um, I can't remember the darn other class of a uh, frigate. Uh, you know, it'll come to me. But... Mm -hmm. So Oliver Hazard Perry, that was an anti-submarine warfare frigate. Kid class was supposed to go to Iran. We bought that, and I can't remember the darn other class of frigate. But we retired all of our frigates. And we never really added that mission set back in. Now we're starting to build some more frigates again, which is good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the frigates act as the pickets for things like carrier strike groups or different kinds of battle groups. So we need those. You know, they 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 play a crucial role in detection, and by creating some of these things, we can build up our navy a little bit. The, the LCS, littoral combat ship, it didn't quite fit the role that we thought it was going to play. We built a lot of these things, and they're they're probably fine for patrolling the Caribbean for drug pirates or whatever. But you know, so can a Coast Guard cutter for probably half the cost. Has there been any large scale navy? Versus Navy conflict between big powers since World War II? The Falklands. Okay. I don't know the what about that. Okay. So, yeah, basically Argentina took over the Falkland Islands, which is right off the um, right off the coast of Argentina. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, funny thing is that the Falkland Islands, essentially it was like 1,900 people and 6,000 sheep. Okay. Right? Well, this sounds like, so this and, sounds like it's not a big <laughs> Navy versus Navy. Yeah, it was. Well, well, it kind of was because Argentina had an aircraft carrier. They had multiple ships. Mm -hmm. um, and what's funny is that, uh, you know, initially, like, there was some doubt. I think one person described it as uh, the Falkland Islands uh, and the, this war between Egypt, uh, Egypt, between Argentina and England. It was like two bald men fighting over a comb. Right. There's no minerals in the Falkland Islands. There's really nothing of any consequence there. But there well, was the, the sheep you mentioned, right? Yeah, the sheep. the sheep. I'm sure that was pretty uh -huh. important. But there was the Union Jack, and Margaret Thatcher didn't play. 
And so she sent an entire battle group, multiple aircraft carriers, submarines to go take those islands back. And Argentina put up a good fight, at least on the air side and the naval side. Land side, not so much. They didn't, they didn't treat their troops that well. Some of their troops didn't have winter clothing. You know, uh, some of their troops had no idea what to do. A lot of them were conscripts. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think, I want to say six British ships were lost. Some to uh, French Exocet missiles, uh, which was essentially the advent of the uh, anti-ship cruise missile. And some to just conventional bombs. Our, the, the Argentinian pilots were freaking ballsy as all hell. They were flying against these British ships, dropping dumb bombs, you know, trying to take these ships out. I mean, that, that took freaking guts. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually the, the British uh, took back the islands. But that was probably the first modern naval engagement, force-on-force naval engagement. And now what's funny is that the British Navy today uh, is less, has fewer ships than just the battle group that was sent to Falkland Islands. Damn. So that, I always thought that was kind of interesting. Like, Do you have strong opinions about um, Elon Musk and X? Do you think anything like funky intentional is going on there? Or do you think it's just become a breeding ground for bad actors? You know, it, it is a breeding ground for bad actors. And I can kind of understand where Elon is coming from. You know, the whole ha oh, free speech, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. I get why he's doing it. I also kind of think that that and you're talking to a guy who drives a Tesla. Mm-hmm. I also kind of think that he, you know, once you have a certain amount of money, just regular entertainment won't do. So let me let me buy this this Twitter and let, let's cause complete chaos, and then I can amuse myself, right? Mm-hmm. So I. I th- I think that free speech is important. And while I don't necessarily agree with some of uh, some of the things people say on Twitter, the neat thing is that I have free speech too. And I'm going to use my free speech to tell you that you're a liar. Do you think it says anything <laughs> that Elon seems to like exclusively support like very far right commentary? <laughs> like I mean I think it's I think it it isn't necessarily very far right commentary as much as it is him trying to be an edge lord. Right? Like like oh look at this this is shocking I'm going to agree with it. Sure, but you it's know, like always edgy way. in like one direction, right? Actually, it's, actually you know what? I will take umbrage. I will fight you on that actually. I would not call it edgy. Actually, there's a term that I coined. What did I call this? Hassan does this. It's like corporate safe edgy. It's where people pretend to be edgy in certain environments, but I don't think they're edgy. They just, they say the things that are, they seem edgy, but they're actually super safe in the environments that they're in. I would say, for instance, a counter example would be me. I am edgy, but I would say that I'm edgy because I'll say things that trigger the fuck out of people irrespective of where I'm at, right? So when I tweeted like the anti-Palestinian stuff, I shouldn't say anti-Palestinian, but like Palestinian jokes, there are certain people that get very, very, very triggered by that that are in my camp. Or when I tweeted uh, or spoke about like the um, the Corey dude, the firefighter guy, obviously that triggered the fuck out of a lot of people, right? People say these comments are edgy. But when I look at like Elon's edginess, all of it points in one direction. Like he's never saying a negative thing about Trump. He's never saying a negative thing about, you know, right wing populism or anything like that. It's always aimed in one yes. direction. Or at least well, initially, he's not like President Trump. I read, I read his biography. I've read like two biographies on the guy. Mm-hmm. Initially, you know, he he didn't seem to like President Trump all that much. I guess he was invited to be part of a space council. Sure. And you know, he he just he was unimpressed. Um, but like, I can kind of see like from a guy who who's uh, on the technical side, you're dealing with a guy who's on the I don't want to say big picture side, but, you know, what is President Trump good at? He's good at building hotels and golf courses. At least mm-hmm. I assume so. I've never stayed at one of his hotels. I've never I've never played golf. But he seems pretty good at making hotels and golf courses, right? <clears throat> and you'd think that might translate into the presidency and being able to manage, uh, manage like, oh, yes, we're going to do this project. We're going to do this project. But, you know, one of the f- interesting things is that the government isn't a business. It's a government, right? Mm-hmm. And that seems to be kind of the one thing that kind of people forget about, that the government isn't a, a business. 
And so if you try to run it like a business, it might not work out the way you think, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I can tell you this. I've, I've lived in New Jersey. I've lived in Maryland. I've lived in a number of different states. Going to the DMV in Maryland is wonderful. I can't believe it. People are friendly. Like, that's like, oh, my God, government can actually work, you know, like at least at the, the DMV in Maryland. You know, you come to New Jersey and you go to the DMV and they're all like, yeah, that'll be uh, $97 and I don't like your shoes. Okay. You know? like, it's, that's New Jersey. Okay. Um... Like, you, you said you, you something were saying that you were under some kind of bot attack or you were going down a rabbit hole on, on some bots. Is that something you want to talk about? Uh, oh, no, I just there's like I've been paying more attention to like activity on Twitter and I f- mm-hmm. the amount of like disingenuous activity seems to be a lot higher than yeah. I thought, um, whether it's like botted accounts or whether it's just like people trolling or whatever. It just seems like there's like very, very high levels of it. And then when I start to click through accounts and I start like retweets and stuff, it's either like, yeah. I don't know if these people are just like completely fake and that they're like AI generated shit or if it's just people who are um, like trolling, which is about as bad, except people are actually wasting their time on it. Um, yeah, and then I'm also, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it starts to feel weird. And then I kind of like look around at these environments and then I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is even being posted right now. It's weird. Like if this is a bot account, like there are a couple accounts I've, several accounts I've found that are like very, very, very strange. And they're like posting like, very personal like uh, attacks against me and i'm like it's so weird is it's like been picked up and algorithm or like algorithmically generated at me or is it like some dude trolling who also just like talks about other weird unrelated shit or uh yeah i don't know just it's it's very interesting seeing the uh or unsettling i guess i should say seeing the environment that exists on x and then it's triply annoying because the people that traditionally in our political system deal with conspiracies not to throw any side on the bus usually it's right wingers but right wingers will not touch anything related to russia because their brain immediately goes to russia gate so they won't talk about any of it mm, i can see that i can see that i i don't know i don't know why you know if you ever think someone is being disingenuous or isn't real mm-hmm. You let me know, and I'll put them through Cyabra. I'll, I'll, uh, Cyabra is the software that I It costs like $12,000 $12, a month. $12,000 a month? $12,000 a month. Dude. Jesus. AWS fees are no freaking joke. Wait, is this like software you developed, or is it? are you renting this, another company license it to you? No, so Cyabra allows me to use it for free to a certain point. Okay. You know, um, because like everything goes into AWS. And so you have to pay fees to AWS. So Cyabra will churn through mountains and mountains and mountains of data, looking for keywords, looking for inauthentic actors. Mm-hmm. And that takes that takes processing time. Nothing's free, right? So if you but if you find something, wait, how long does it take to run somebody through like this database or whatever? It depends. Like it depends on whether you're it depends on whether you're doing Twitter or. Instagram or TikTok or whatever, but it'd be a couple hours. It also depends on how far back you want to go. If the software goes back like a month. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's about the limit. Because again, like there's just so much data. Sure. You just, you know, if you try to churn through it all, it'd be uh, finding historical stuff is a freaking nightmare. Um, you know, even when I when I was researching that end wokeness account, I don't know if you watched that video I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to go to the Wayback Machine because at some point the guy running that Inwokeness account deleted all their stuff. And mm-hmm. It could have been that that, that account was maybe uh, just uh, set up uh, as a farm just to gain followers, and then it was sold. You know, that that could be a possibility. Or People used to have a Reddit account a long time ago, yeah. I don't like the idea of, um, could you imagine if like you turned on the news and there's like five news channels and they're just called A, B, C, D, E, and F, and you have no idea like who's behind them Uh, or what the structure is. Like, I really don't like the anonymity tied to news accounts, like that libs of TikTok account. Like how many people, like what I'm saying is that like, let's say that it came out, for instance, let's say there are 10, 10 of the largest accounts on Twitter. Let's say that we find out that like seven of them are foreign accounts that come from like, uh, you know, like Qatar or Russia. Like, I, I think that's important. Like, I think it's really, really important to know. I don't like that there's no accountability or, or like not even any open transparency or information about it. Yeah, I mean, so that that's just, that's just it, right? Like, you know, one of the neat things about America is that 
And anyone can kind of call themselves a journalist, which can be good or bad, mm -hmm. right? But there's no licensing process for a journalist. And if the government ever demands a license to become a journalist, that's that's probably when even you would put on your Hawaiian shirt and get out your plate carrier and, and start, sure. you know, start fighting, right? Um, but, you know, the... The issue is the news accounts that are really entertainment accounts. And that kind of, you know, are you doing news or are you doing entertainment? And, I think it should be one. Know, of I think if you're commenting on certain political issues, I think I think your court, a court could figure it out. That's what we have them for. <laughs> well, that, I mean, here's my question for you. Am I news or am I entertainment? I'd say you're news. You'd have to register. Yeah. In my regime, yeah, you'd be registering, and I would find out where your money comes from. That's an interesting question, because I was thinking about that. I, I stopped calling myself a journalist, by, uh, like, last year, mm -hmm. when Tim Mack of the Counteroffensive asked me to do, like, actual journalism stuff. And I was just so clueless. Like, I have to write a what? What's a slug line? Like, I, I, you know, like, what do you want me to? I can write a script and then talk. Can I do that? No, you need to write an article. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know how to do this. I guess I'm not actually a journalist. So, yeah, that's when I stopped. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do the intel side of things. Mm -hmm. And the more I look at it, and, you know, people have compared me to Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I don't think anybody in astronomy or astrophysics, astrophysics considers him to be a brilliant physicist. And, and if, you're, if you are working as an astrophysicist today, you're probably pretty good. Sure. Right? Because you got to get your degree in physics and you got to get your master's. So there's fewer people to get their master's than you got to get your PhD. Okay. And then you got to get a job doing that. So there's probably very few actual astrophysicist jobs. Uh, but he's also written like 13 papers, which from what I understand is not that much. Sure. It's not that it's much. Really I will say, though, he's he is a communicator, but he is like pretty well studied. Like he's yeah, he like has contributed to research. Uh, maybe not like as much as somebody that does it all the time, but he's a communicator. But like I think he's significantly above and I'm not even throwing him under the bus, but like Bill Nye, for instance, um, I, I think that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah, I think it's kind of science. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Hank Green. Right. Like, I, I guess maybe Hank Green might be a better. Uh, sure. Sure. Know, sure. Green. Maybe. Yeah. Because I don't think I don't know if he's. Sweet. Yeah. He does. He does science stuff. Yeah, this but he doesn't have any. I don't think he's published or like PhD or written like that, right? No, he's not. Yeah. He's not. And I think you know, the, the, kind of the role that I can kind of play is that you know, Tom Clancy's dead. They can't bring him on the news anymore. Mm -hmm. Marley Ermey is dead, right? So there's really no military mm -hmm. communicator or intelligence communicator that can come on and say, "Hey, this is why this thing is happening." Mm -hmm. And that's. I think that's. That, that, that's definitely that Neil deGrasse Tyson role I can play, but I think at the end of the day, a lot of what I do is entertainment. Yeah, but it's entertainment with like the goal to inform, right? Yeah, it's entertainment with the goal to inform. No, but it's it's the kind of stuff that you can go to a party and say, "Hey, did you know that the F sixteen can protect an area from Washington D.C. all the way up to New York, to all the way to Akron, Ohio, and then down to South Carolina?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and I invented that analogy because when I'm do when I'm on a news program, I need to explain how far the F-16 can fly with a weapon load. All right, it's about a 500 mile circle. So Washington D.C. to New York, 500 miles. People know what that is. Mm -hmm. you know how far Akron is. You know how far uh, uh, Charlotte is. So I'm curious. Let's say that you're um, let's say that you're arguing uh, let's see. Hold on. Oh, also, wait, I gave you an account, okay? If you could look up one, I just, it doesn't have that many tweets. I'm just, I'm just curious. I just want to know, okay, what they think about uh, okay. that account. I can, I can drop this, I can drop this into Cyber right now. Uh, let me open up, uh, I gotta, it's gonna take, it's gonna take a little bit. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, I don't need it now, just in the tomorrow or the day after or something, um, right? Yeah, it won't um, take that long. Okay, so let's say that you are, uh, Okay. Are you familiar with a with a Su thirty five? Su thirty five. Yeah, it's Russian kind of like your stealthy Russia's stealthy ish fighter. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, do you think that it would beat an F sixteen? Um. So typically, it's the better pilot that wins. 
Okay. What if yeah. somebody came out and they said that you're actually wrong? This is just the platform is superior in every way. Okay. This would destroy F-16s. And he pops up, and let's say seven other channels pop up, and you're going back and forth. It seems like they're fairly knowledgeable, but they're not really correct in what they're saying, but they know enough that their arguments are convincing. And let's say that you have this fight for a while, and then let's say, I'm not saying that the plane itself or, or that the determination is made based on like the YouTube chats, but let's say that the, um, the United States ultimately decides to pull the F-16 platform from Ukraine that we either want to take them back or we don't want them using them or whatever. And then you're looking around, you're kind of like outnumbered by these other channels that are, you know, are, are constantly posting misinformation about how F-16s are just like, you know, they're just shitty planes. And let's say that, uh, you know, my piece of legislation passes or something and you find out in five years, oh, all six of these accounts who had avatars of being like African-American men or like very like Southern Texan men yeah. or whatever, you find out that, oh, actually these guys, you know, they were all named Petrov or whatever, and they were all from like fucking Moscow and St. Petersburg. Do you think that that's information where you're like, okay, well, fuck me. I would have really wanted to know that these were the people that I was arguing with. Or do you think that that type of information, people have a right, foreign citizens have a right to obscure that when it comes to participating in our media environment, even if they just say like, oh, well, these are just like fun videos we're doing talking about planes. We're not journalists. So I don't think foreign viewers have a right to anything. Okay. All right. I, I, and you are talking to a guy who thinks that, that foreign viewers have a right to a hellfire through their freaking window. Okay. Um, they do right now, though, enjoy like a pretty broad, I don't want to call them legal rights, but um, like corporate rights, essentially, right? Like Google isn't going to out yeah. an account or whatever because the policies that they have for their uh, users are going to be the same as they would for a U.S. citizen, except for maybe like responding to subpoenas or something. Or no, even in that, it's probably going to be the same, yeah. It would be nice to know. It would be nice to know. And that's, but that's why you have people who watch those accounts. That's why you have. Uh, well, but now we can not because part of Elon coming over to X was doing the Twitter files and then saying that the FBI was corrupt for suggesting to Twitter that some accounts might be compromised. And now he's cut all contact, essentially, or cooperation working with these people. So we've lost any collaboration and any insight into the, at least the X platform, right? Twitter was doing some interesting stuff when it came to uh, suppressing accounts that didn't fit the narrative of what the U.S. government wanted to talk about regarding, you know, the, the pandemic. That's, that's an issue. I mean, here's the thing. You want, you want free speech, but also good science requires questioning data. Okay. Right? You can't say this is, this is the, the way of, you know, this, this is the... This is definitely how this is whatever and that's if you look at the um if you look at something like masking you know when it came to COVID 19 we didn't we didn't really know if we could or we couldn't we should or we shouldn't would it make a difference mm -hmm. yes it would make a difference and then kind of later on we found out like oh yeah well that we were wrong we need special kinds of masks and then we kind of find out later no none of that's true so but it, it took science to get there, right? And you're not going to have everything go right. I think probably one of our biggest misses regarding COVID and probably one of the reasons that that uh, Twitter uh, conspiracy theories took off was that we didn't sit down with the American people and say, we don't know what's going on and a whole bunch of people are going to die. Right? I disagree. I feel <laughs> like I'm, I'm sympathetic like towards that position. But I think it assumes that everybody in the field is a good faith actor trying to discern or figure out like what actually is going on. But I think the challenge is you've got first world countries or what, not that's dumb. The whole world is we're in yeah. an environment where there is now a virus spreading. Nobody knows what the maximum extent is going to be, what the lethality is going to be, how contagious is going to be, how far, like nobody really knows. And now you have to start making judgments. Um, I imagine probably not very dissimilar to, you know, what you might do in a, in an active war zone, right? Well, you have to start making judgment calls with limited information and you don't have time to wait for everything because if you wait, right, sometimes indecision is the worst decision. Oftentimes indecision is the worst decision, worse than a bad decision. Um, and I don't have an issue with people. Uh, not only do I not have an issue, I think that people should always be skeptical of and second guessing the government, but there's a difference between second guessing and being skeptical versus ascribing malice to every single action. And I think that yeah, the former is infinitely valuable and the latter is unbelievably destructive to where 
I think there are, and I've said this a million times, and it's true of almost every big issue in the past eight years, there are so many good conversations that we should have had and could be having about what should a vaccine mandate look like? What should vaccines look like? What should a lockdown look like? How do we approach, you know, trade? Like, but we can't have that because the question isn't, what's a good versus a bad lockdown? The question is, is do you really want Bill Gates telling the government that George Soros is gonna lock you in your homes while they're stealing your freedoms because they fucking hate you? And it's like, okay, well, Jesus Christ, I guess, like we can have that argument, but like, fuck, <laughs> like it's not advancing anything. We're not getting any closer to any kind of good uh, understanding of anything because we're just like fighting conspiracies all day. Yeah, the conspiracy thing is tough. I don't know how to fix that. And I, I think that conspiracy theory is, is kind of like a warm blanket, you know, like it, it, it you, you really want to enjoy that, that, that comfort that everything has an explanation. Uh, regarding the uh, attempted assassination of former President Trump, mm -hmm. like it's I, I look at, you know, I, I find it very easy to understand why a 20 year old who's never really done anything in his life might climb up on top of a roof and try to assassinate the president. Sure. And I can see the Secret Service saying, like, you know what, we're not going to station people there because that's outside of the inner cordon and we don't have enough people to do whatever. Or that's local law enforcement. They'll take care of it. And then one person doesn't talk to the other. I, I see that because I've been in the military and I see how like things slip through the cracks. Yeah, I will say just and, as because I, I haven't commented on this and I, I need you to reinforce what I'm going to yeah. say because it's really important. It drives me crazy that nobody realizes this. You people will only see a mistake when something bad actually happens. Nobody sees like the mistakes when nobody's there to take advantage of it. So like I saw this said over and over again, um, and, and these fucking retarded military experts, whatever the fuck goes on TV, they're like, you would never, this is no shot that you would ever leave this room, and this would never happen, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no shot. There is no shot that this is the very first time that somebody missed a particular area. Like, I'm sure that there are tons of vulnerabilities, tons of opens, like you, you, I'm sure you do your best, but I'm sure things, like you said, slip through the cracks. But there's usually not somebody capitalizing on every single mistake. So whenever somebody does and there's a mistake that happens, people have this assumption that every single thing was running perfectly right up to that point. And then it makes people far more conspiratorial than I think they ought to be. Do you agree with that or do you totally disagree with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I once talked with a police officer and I said, hey, how was your day today? And he was like, oh, well, I, I stopped five robberies today. Jesus, you stopped five robberies? He's like, well, I, uh, I sat in my car all night. Patrolling but, or whatever, know, yeah. You, you never, I could have stopped five robberies, right? Just by being in my car, no one decided to rob that particular donut shop, right? Yeah. So you're absolutely right that, you know, you could be out there, uh, you know, you make a mistake and then nobody capitalizes on that mistake. But the, the one freaking day you make a mistake and someone does... That's that's a bad day. And you have to be right every time. Mm -hmm. The terrorist has to be right once. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever that's um bad. did you ever read or, or do you have any opinions about like the Epstein stuff? I'm not that familiar with it. Um I know he was like a kind of pretended that he was a stock trader, but nobody can ever remember doing a stock trade with him. Sure. <laughs> you know? Like okay. I don't I don't know. That could have been that whole thing could have been some sort of elicitation event mm -hmm. where, you know, let's, uh, you know, uh, if someone. So uh, did you ever go to like a timeshare presentation? No, I hear about them in jokes with old with people, but I don't know. I have no idea what a timeshare is. That is that's like a joke that comes up. Oh, you want a timeshare? So uh, Jordan Harbinger has a really good video about timeshares. And but essentially, when uh, you go to a timeshare pitch. Mm -hmm. They um, they have free food there for you. They have free drinks. You know, you've stayed in a nice hotel the past couple of days. So they've kind of primed you to wanting to, to do them a favor since they did you a favor. Right? Okay. It makes it hard to say no to this timeshare uh, presentation. Yeah. And, and it's almost like maybe this Epstein character was working for a government. I don't know which government, but a government. Mm -hmm. And let's let's get these wealthy scientists, these wealthy businessmen, these people, these movers and shakers, let's get them to an island and ply women on them. And, you know, the next time we need a favor, we might say, hey, remember that time uh, I did you that favor? Maybe it's time you can do me a favor. 
Okay. Sure. So that, that might have been Epstein's thing. Sure. I was curious for in um, terms of the the suicide, I think is a really good example of um, how like having more data available to you can like significantly alter how you view a particular event. I think it's really comparable to the shooting here. Although I, ha I don't know as much about the background of how the Secret Service operates around Donald yeah. Trump. But um, like the, the way that the Epstein story is presented is um, Epstein was in a cell. <clears throat> he was given mm -hmm. something that he wasn't supposed to be given. The cameras were turned off outside of his cell. The officers didn't patrol his cell that night. Um, and then he killed himself while none of the cameras uh, outside were like recording. Like these are the, all the facts that are given. Um, all of those facts, my understanding is that all of those facts are true. And then given each set of facts, or given the set of facts here, when you look at it, it seems exceptional to believe that anything beyond foul play happened. Like it seems very hard to imagine that all of these things could have perfectly come together to, to that, that like, uh, you know, like that Epstein actually killed himself and it wasn't, you know, some kind of malfeasance. But if you read the actual, like um, the federal, um, it's the federal prisons, fuck, I wish I could remember the name of the agency, but it's the, whatever the federal prisons, uh, Bureau of Prisons or whatever it is. When you read their report and they go over like the conditions of the prison, like you find out that it wasn't, it wasn't just his camera that was turned off. Half the cameras in the jail in the prison weren't recording for weeks, that there'd been maintenance requests put in because like they, they just didn't have the money for it. And you find out that the, there were a lot of complaints filed that guards often complained that the, uh, or not guards, prisoners often complained that, yeah, like guards just, they don't patrol, they don't walk by, they don't fucking do anything, they don't check on us at night, right? And then as you like read more of these like conditions, you're like, oh, okay, I think I kind of, I think I kind of, I'm understanding more what's going on or like, you know, was there foul play? I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but now the official story that's presented seems far more likely or at the very least like more plausible. Yeah. And I feel the same. Yeah. For like the, anytime a bad thing yeah. happens, like, yeah, if somebody gets into a drunk driving car accident, it probably wasn't the first time they were drunk driving. It's probably just the first time they got into an accident drunk driving. Um, but that's the only thing you see, not everything beforehand, you know? Yeah, that's actually, I did not know about the, how many cameras were turned off, but that, that does change things, right? Yeah. So, oh, the camera in his cell was turned off, but all the cameras were, were out that month. Yeah. Where was it, Rikers Island or something? Where was, where was uh, Epstein, um, where did he stay? Uh, I don't know the name oh, of the hold prison. Oh, hold on but... for a second. Yeah, someone's, be someone's at the door here. Okay, be, be right careful. back. I don't like these, um, I don't like this retainer, it's I'm here. too big, it's bothering me. Um, hi. All right, let me, uh, pop this back on. Did I, uh, all right. Yeah, I'm right, good to go, let me, I see the light coming in that way. All right, what else we got? I think that's about all I have for now. Did your software return oh, anything? Is it a bot? Uh, let me look. I'm gonna look right now. So here, uh, I don't. I'm gonna have to log out, log back in again. So, Sabra, I can. What once this? If the answers haven't come through, all right. Uh, I called the Project Destiny. Uh, oh, Jesus. What? Um, so, oh, wait, Mount Moore. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, 5% of this person's Mount Mora are inauthentic followers. Although, all of a sudden, this person just started posting a lot. Uh, average, they don't seem to post Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. ever. They seem to post Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, mainly Friday at around 12 p.m. Uh, I mean, I could, I would have to dig a little bit more. Let me look at the text here. I, I, I don't know if I can show this whole screen because Cyber might get mad at me if I. Yeah, you don't have to. You're good. You're good. Um, but I don't know if this particular account is an authentic. Um, but the account is followed by some inauthentic accounts, which that's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I would have to like dig through this a little bit more than I can do. Just, just stand on. And I'd have to like, I'll have to do a report for you, but 
Okay. That's interesting. Eighty percent eighty percent men. That could be some kind of clue. Yeah, twenty six percent negative spreaders. What's that mean? This person mainly um so Mount Mora, so according to a negative spreader is like a person who uh, mostly uh, spreads false information. Oh, okay. So negative information or false information. Does it give you a uh, clue? I don't know if you manually investigate these ever. Do you ever find that it's weird that you'll find these accounts that kind of post pretty frequently? They've got very low follower accounts, very low engagement, but they're posting like unique AI pictures. Man, yeah, I, I think I've dealt with this dude before. Really? Yeah. Is his picture of Rob Goldstein? Yes, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. I have dealt with this dude before. No, he's... Uh, so, Syabra believes this is an authentic profile. Okay. It was uh, created in May of 2022. What's What's the particular issue with this guy? I was just curious because the the comments about me were very specific and they seem to like exhibit like humor and everything. But then there are also like these other comments about like Al-Aqsa and like very particular like Middle Eastern comments. And the engagement with me just feels like a little bit strange, but it's really hard to tell. Like this could just be like a autistic Internet person versus like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It looks like a lot of this stuff is human generated. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of AI content here. Wait, what do you mean by human generated? Like pictures or? Not like the 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 tweets this person is tweeting. They're they're likely likely human generated. What is it? What is um? So, what does the software do to try to figure that out? Uh, I don't know if I can talk about that. Oh, okay. It's a trade secret. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. There is some stuff here that is that is possibly AI generated. He does not want to destroy al Aqsa in the dome, build a third temple. He is not a Jew. He is not an ally. He is Amalek. Who talks like this? That's weird. Just be some weird dude. Yeah. Huh. All right. I guess I'm going to go shower because I have a 15 hour flight coming up. Well, good luck. Have fun. Be careful. Are you waiting? You, where? You already said flying exactly where you're flying. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm flying into Sydney, and then I got to fly from Sydney. I got to clear customs, go to the fly to the Gold Coast, Gold Coast for two days, then Sydney for five days, four days, four and days. And it's a that's a damn fifteen hour flight. All right, well, fifteen hour flight in a uh, premium economy. It's all I could afford. Not too bad. Not too bad. Dollars. Like Jesus. This whole trip. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I know. It's like. It's, it's, uh, you know, but I get to write a paper, so it's all worth it. Hey, it's good seeing you again, man. I'm glad you're doing okay. I, I, I had, a, you know, this is how much your fans love you. They told me, you need to give him a call. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he's in a bad place. <laughs> so like, I'll, I'll do it. I don't think he needs to, he's a grown man, you know, he doesn't need to listen to me, but. Yeah, my fans are babies sometimes, but. I'm okay. glad you're okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. If there's ever anything that comes up, you want to chat, just let us know. And uh, yeah. Hey, Steven, you have a great day. Yeah, have a good one. I'll see you later. Mm hmm. Oh, what the fuck? The lives of TikTok lady is targeting you now. Bayzed. Bayzed. Bayzed.
the fuck is this? Don't care. All right. I'm curious how much of this I can get through in a night. Is it worth, should I be reading this on my tablet and highlighting? Nah, fuck it. Actually, wait, I should download this. Uh, Civil cases? What would I even put? Federal court? Uh, U.S. Fe is it, would this be federal civil case? Is there? Can you have a federal civil case? In the Superior Court of the State of Delaware. Is a Superior Court a, a federal court or is that a state court? Superior Court, Wikipedia, USA. The Superior Court is a state trial court of general jurisdiction. Is there a federal civil court, USA? Federal civil case involved a lose between two more parties, a civil action? Okay. You can do federal civil action. I guess, can you? Okay, oh, right, whatever. You know what? U.S. civil cases, fuck it. Fox, one of the most powerful media companies in the United States, gave life to a manufactured storyline about election fraud that cast a then-little-known voting machine company called Dominion as the villain. After the November 3, 2020 presidential election, viewers began fleeing Fox in favor of media outlets endorsing the lie that massive fraud caused President Trump to lose the election. They saw Fox as insufficiently supportive of President Trump, including because Fox was the first network to declare that President Trump lost Arizona. So Fox set out to lure viewers back, including President Trump himself, by intentionally and falsely blaming Dominion for President Trump's loss by rigging the election. The 
This is in June 2021. This complaint is filed. In June of 2021, Dominion filed a complaint against Fox News, alleging that the company engaged in a widespread campaign of defamatory behavior towards Dominion in order to salvage its reputation among conservative media listeners. Fox endorsed, repeated, and broadcast a series of verifiably false yet devastating lies about Dominion. These outlandish, defamatory, and far-fetched fictions included Fox, uh, included Fox falsely claiming that one, Dominion committed election fraud by rigging the 2020 presidential election. Two, the Dominion software and algorithms manipulated vote counts in the 2020 presidential election. Three, Dominion is owned by a company founded in Venezuela to rig elections for the dictator Hugo Chavez. And four, the Dominion paid kickbacks to government officials who used its machines in the 2020 presidential election. Okay, it's good to have these. Dominion's lawsuit. Um, so lying on four separate claims. I want to debate you on Pence's power. Uh, you can.
parties and relevant non-parties. Plaintiff U.S. Dominion, Inc. is a for-profit Delaware corporation with its principal place of business in Denver, Colorado. Um, every 10 pages, I'll grab a disagree or fuck it. Plaintiff Dominion Voting Systems, Inc. is a for-profit Delaware corporation with its principal place of business uh, in Denver, Colorado, and has maintained an office in New York since July 2009. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of U.S. Dominion, Inc. Uh, Plaintiff Dominion Voting System Corporation is a for-profit Ontario corporation with its principal place of business in uh, Toronto, Ontario. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of U.S. Dominion, Inc. Um, and then U.S. Dominion, Inc. and Dominion Voting Systems, Inc. and Dominion Voting Systems Corporation are collectively referred to as Dominion. Okay, just as a heads up, if you guys post the same message over and over and over and over and over again, I ban you. I've probably seen it. I just don't want to respond. I don't have time to respond to every single fucking message. You don't need to post the same message over and 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 over again. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Defendant Fox News Network LLC. Fox has overseen the most watched the most watched cable news network in America for five years running. The company was formed and is organized under the laws of Delaware and has its principal place of business in New York. It is a wholly owned, it is wholly owned by Fox Corporation, a Delaware corporation, also headquartered in New York. Fox operates the Fox News Channel, the Fox Business Channel, Fox News Radio, Fox News Digital, which includes the Fox.com, blah, blah, blah. Okay, then I know this. Maria Bart, Barty, Barty Romo, is that how you pronounce her name? Barty Romo? Is a Fox News and Fox Business personality who hosts mornings with Maria weekday mornings from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Fox Business and Sunday weekly. Okay. Barter, Barter Romo. Barter Romo, okay. We've got Tucker Carlson. We've got Lou Dobbs. Sean Hannity. Gene Pereiro, Sidney Powell. Rudolph Giuliani. Mike Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow. Oh no. The first three quarters of 2020, MyPillow spent more than $62 million on TV ads, with nearly 99% of it going to cable channels like Fox News. How much revenue does a pillow company do? They spent $62 million on TV ads? In the first half of 2020, MyPillow ads made up about 37.8% of the advertising revenue for Tucker Carlson Tonight and 15% of the advertising revenue for Hannity. Holy shit. My pillow revenue. Is this a publicly traded company or the rise and fall of Mike Lindell? By 2018, they'd sold 30 million pillows, growing the company's annual revenue to 300 million. Their annual revenue was 300 million, meaning what? Their profits, assuming they're collecting 10% and not expanding or reinvesting or anything else, would have been 30 million? Where the fuck does he get this much money for ads? The fuck? Oh. <sighs> <sighs> He went broke. That's all of his money ever. <laughs> okay. Okay, whatever. Don't have time for all this shit. Factual allegations. In 2002, Dominion CEO John Polos had an idea that he thought could help people with vision impairments vote independently on paper ballots, so he founded a business out of his basement in Toronto and incorporated it under Ontario law as Dominion Voting Systems Corporations. 
Corporation. From the beginning, Dominion's objective has been accurate, transparent, and accessible elections. As it grew, Dominion developed technology to solve many of the technical and voter intent issues that came to light as a result of the 2000 election. Its systems are certified under standards promulgated by the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, uh, reviewed and tested by independent testing laboratories, accredited by the EAC, and were designed to be auditable and include a paper ballot backup to verify results. Dominion Voting Systems Corporation procured its first U.S. contract in July 2009 to provide voting machine technology to over 50 counties in the state of New York. After procuring the co that contract, Dominion Voting Systems Corporation established a New York office, hired 20 employees. By the end of July, incorporated a subsidiary company, Dominion Voting Systems, Inc., in Delaware. Um, Polos, uh, or Polos voluntarily worked with the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States to ensure it knew who he was and who was invested in Dominion. For the next several years, Dominion systems were manufactured in the state of New York. Mm, let's just have, I guess, facts. More fact pattern, I guess. Factual allegations. Dominion was established in 2002 by... Paul Paulos, John Paulos. And procured its first contract with New York State in 2009. Okay, hi, what do you want? Hi, um, I'm just saying that there's an alternative story to the Epstein thing that, um, you know, it's, uh, there is a possibility that someone just used all the, you know, all the issues as cover to, um, you know, to give himself plaus plausible deniability for killing him. I feel like that's an option people don't talk about. Well, because there's absolutely no evidence for it. Um, I feel like the evidence is pretty, I mean, is there any evidence for him killing himself? I, from what I heard, there's nothing yes, like to he say was discovered having killed himself what do you mean he had wounds that were consistent with hanging himself and he was hung by his own shit that was tied around his bed what do you mean um do you, is it possible to fake that i mean anything's possible but i mean like whether it's possible doesn't answer the question of what was most likely um i mean i'm not saying it's the most likely i'm just saying that it is a point of view people just don't um bring up and i feel but like because there's absolutely I mean, no evidence really... for it um but yeah but do you, do you agree that it would be pretty easy to hide basically everything for it given like i mean how long within he watched it was like multiple hours like over three if i recall correctly yeah but that's not how we make decisions in the real world we don't think of all the things that are possible right like it's very unlikely but it is possible that there's like a dwarf that lives in my apartment who just hides in corners whenever i'm entering and leaving rooms and he could be here the entire time and i just don't see him because he's very crafty and clever about where he moves but why the fuck would i assume that ever without a shred of evidence for it um yeah, i mean it feels like you're kind of i don't know I don't, I don't really disagree with you there, right? I feel like I'm just saying it's a possibility people don't talk about. And like a much better thing, I feel like, I feel like it's, I feel like it's, um, I don't know, people say like it was set up and stuff. Um, I don't, I don't know why they don't make this argument because it makes the most sense, right? Instead of saying like the guards did it or whatever. Um, well, because it probably it makes like the, the most sense that he just killed himself, that he saw that his life was fucking over and he just wanted to kill himself because he was fucked. I mean, I, f I feel like there's, I mean, like, I feel like we're both making assumptions for it. I, I mean, wait, well, do you why think do you we're think making the you're... same amount of assumptions? Um, I mean, didn't he literally already time? try to kill himself once? Was the first suicide attempt, was that a fake or? Um, um, no, I, I mean, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just not very informed because I wasn't aware of this. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm not even arguing for it necessarily. I'm just saying that it's something that people ought to bring up more if they wish to argue that. Well, but side. they shouldn't bring it up more. We shouldn't consider all things if we have absolutely no evidence for them whatsoever. That would be silly, no? Like, we would be considering... I mean, what do, you think is, what, do, what, what do you think is better, bringing that up or something even less likely than it? I don't think you should bring up either. Either an unlikely thing with no evidence for it or a thing that's even less likely than that. Yeah, but if you were to bring up the opposing view, you ought to do that one over the other one. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Well, but nobody even really makes that argument, right? I'm saying that they should. Okay, well, they don't, so I don't know what you want me to say. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think we should say people, those people are retarded and should get better at like thinking. Which I mean, I think that's well, but they're not to, thinking. Like, the other side, but they're not right? really thinking about the other side. They just they want there to be a conspiracy. If somebody just took advantage of yeah, it, it's not I, as I juicy or conspiratorial, so they don't care about that explanation. But I mean, the the thing is that this actually is more juicy and conspiratorial. Like, in order to get this done, right? I mean, the state actor have to be involved. They'd have to be dropped. You know, they'd have to be a big investigation. Um, I, I mean, I was talking to the person down there making my way downtown. Um, and we had like a whole discussion about how like, I mean, it's actually very juicy and very entertaining to speculate about. Um, I'm just saying it's like extremely stupid to me. People don't like explore it or think about it. Um, that's all I'm saying. I'm not even saying I, I believe in it or, um, you know, we ought to talk about it. I'm just saying if you were to talk about the opposite side, you should talk about that, uh, that perspective. Okay. All right. Be all right, gotcha. Anything else? Nope.